Hello and welcome to today's webinar on how to monetize your data with Tableau Embed Analytics. My name is Ariel Proulis and I'm joining this webinar today from the Curious Canada Toronto office. With me today, I'm happy to have uh, Jeffrey Dell, who's joining us from our Curious US uh, DC office. So welcome everybody. Just before we, uh, we get started, um, I want to kick things off here with a quick poll, um, just to quickly understand your familiarity with uh, Tableau. This will also give us another uh, couple of minutes to let the other people join in, and then we uh, will kick things off. So I'm going to launch the uh, poll here, and please uh, uh, choose the uh, option that's most applicable to you. I do promise to uh, share the results. Okay, we got a 78% voting rate. Let's uh, try to get to at least 95% uh, of you people uh, voting, and then we'll get started. Okay, just a few more votes. For those of you who just joined uh, in the last minute, please uh, feel free to uh, answer the poll and we'll get started. Okay, perfect. I'm closing the poll in a few seconds. And I'm gonna share the results with you. Um, so, I, good to see that most of you used every day, almost 60% of you. Uh, but there's definitely a good day, chunk of you out there that they, uh, is, I guess, just getting started with Tableau, or heard of it, or don't even know what Tableau is. Um, so that's great. We do have a quick introduction to, a, to Tableau, and we'll definitely uh, spend a few moments on that in uh, today's session. Okay, so uh, again, a quick introduction. Uh, this is Ariel Perville speaking. I'm leading the uh, Toronto office here in uh, Canada for Kiros. I've been in the uh, BI and analytics space in the past uh, 15 years, and specifically in the last six years, I've focused on embedded analytics solution, working with integrated software vendors, helping them integrate into their applications, uh, analytical applications and solutions, uh, developing OEM applications, usually in a SaaS multi-tenant environment. Uh, so that has been my biggest focus in the past few years. And with me today, I have uh, Jeff Riedel joining us from the, uh, the uh, Kiros US DC office. Jeff is leading that office. He brings more than 10 years experience in the uh, analytics space. And he also has a master in industrial organization psychology, which for us is, is a great combination together with technology solution really help to, uh, to bring those uh, data solutions into large organizations and control the whole change management aspect in terms of the way uh, data solutions transform those organizations uh, and, and allows them to operate differently. So Jeff will be uh, covering extensively uh, a, one of our customer stories and how we help them embed Tableau later on in uh, today's session. So uh, looking at the, uh, uh, what we've planned for you for today, we'll go through a very quick introduction of Kiros and Tableau. As mentioned, it looks like most of you are familiar to a degree of Tableau, so we'll, we'll keep it quite uh, brief. And then we'll spend most of our time on um, a, explaining what embedded analytics looks like in uh, today's most common scenarios, um, how that ties back into monetizing those different types of solutions, Jeff will walk us through a, uh, a case study or a customer story of ours that they, we helped uh, with uh, embedding Tableau in order to deliver a competitive edge. And finally, I think a, a very interesting portion of this webinar will be focused on some of the opportunities we see out there uh, to help you leverage some of the latest Tableau scalabilities and further monetize your embedded solutions. 
Um, we will take questions in this webinar as much as time allows. So please feel free to use the uh, GoToWebinars questions panel and type in those questions as we go along. Uh, we'll try to cover those uh, as much as possible throughout the flow or at the end of the webinar, we do promise to get back to you with, uh, with answers to all your questions. Okay, so without further ado, let's kick things off and start with a very brief introduction of, the, of Kiros. Um, Kiros uh, is an international publicly traded consulting and technology organization. Uh, we operate in 18 different countries across the globe with more than 3,000 employees. And we really focus on three different areas, management and transformation, data intelligence, and digital experience. And I think today's uh, webinar's topic is, is a great example of the synergy we see between those different areas. Really, if you think about it, Advanced Analytics is all about transforming the way you leverage your data assets and provide those to your customers in a, using a better digital experience. So for us, in almost every solution we work on, we see a great data uh, complementary uh, uh, or synergy between those different day, uh, areas of our practice, which help us really deliver on the value we want to provide to our customers in this era of, of digital and, and data age. Um, thinking about the, uh, specifically the, uh, the data, data uh, uh, practice that we offer, data intelligence, this is really the, the backbone of that entire solution. If we drill down deeper into what our data intelligence practice looks like to support our mission, it really is a full stack uh, of services and solution ranging from data strategy that we help our customers with, developing an analytical roadmap or a BI center of excellence, helping our customers with uh, setting up the right data governance in place to manage and deploy the data across the organization, going into data engineering, helping architect uh, and model data across different environments, moving data into the cloud and, and doing real-time data ingestions, uh, of course, data discovery, which today's webinar is, uh, is greatly focused on, how you can leverage a, a, the data assets you have to really explore and find new insights, and ideally do that in a self-service fashion, leveraging tools such as Tableau, all the way down to a, a data science and how you can operationalize your machine learning models and, and find smarter and more predictive insights about your data. So these are all services and offerings that we deliver to our customers using the most innovative technologies out there that we've partnered with, and also using our own data products that we've developed. So for example, Riveri is a great tool that we've developed to ingest data across many different data sources into a, a cloud data warehouses. Uh, that's just one example for uh, the different tools that we've built over the years based on the experience we've gained helping consulting our different customers. Now I did mention we've partnered a lot with uh, the most innovative uh, technology companies. Tableau is a great example for that. Uh, we are a global partner of Tableau, and we do enjoy the innovation that Tableau brings into a, uh, uh, the data discovery landscape every day uh, in helping our customers build their solution. So I'll do a quick introduction here of Tableau. If, if you are a new to Tableau and you just heard of it, um, Tableau's mission is really to help people see and understand data. And the way Tableau does that is by offering a, a very powerful analytics platform that is really easy to use. And I think that's a, uh, a great factor that leads to the, the, the ability to really adopt the solution across many different types of users, whether you're an analyst, uh, whether you're a, um, a developer, or just a business consumer. All those a, 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 um, types of users can really leverage what Tableau has to offer across different capabilities. And uh, that goes along with the uh, extensive community that Tableau has that really contributes, again, to that the adoption that they, uh, uh, we see over and over across organizations, being able to leverage the technology and apply it uh, across many different use cases in the organization, and that is, of course, one of them. The other piece that they, we see mostly relevant to, uh, to embedded is the fact that Tableau can really lend itself to many different technology stacks. So you don't have to replace what you have to demonstrate to get started with Tableau. You can definitely introduce it into uh, almost any technology stack that's uh, available out there. Uh, and that's also a great benefit when you think about embedding because you don't have to necessarily adapt your environment to Tableau. You can just bring in Tableau into your environment. And ultimately, that results in, in real mission-critical systems as organizations are trying to leverage data across all different types of users and be, really become data-driven, um, those type of systems becomes much more mission critical than just nice to have reporting systems and Tableau excels in, the, in that type of offering. Drilling down one level deeper into a Tableau's platform capability, uh, it ranges from um, data access to almost any, other, any common data sources out there. 
um, on top of the access to the different data sources. Tableau has a, a very good data preparation layer, allows you to really manipulate and transform your data and prepare it to different analytical activities that you need to do on top of it. Um, but before it's provided to the, uh, to the users, it does come with a rich governance layer, allowing you to control and dictate what elements of the platform different users will be able to, uh, to access and then do the discovery on top of that uh, with the very rich visual interface and interactive interface of Tableau. And that's, that's the root of Tableau. That's where Tableau started with basically being able to visualize data through a very interactive experience, allowing you to find new answers to questions you have in a very easy to use fashion. The ultimate results can be easily shared uh, using a lot of collaboration tools that the Tableau baked into the platform. And we'll talk about those native capabilities of Tableau later on, but the end results can be consumed via desktop, via browser and mobile. And obviously as today's webinar is focused on, uh, in an embedded scenario within your hosting application. In terms of deployment, Tableau can be deployed in almost any environment, whether you deploy on premises, uh, whether you want to uh, deploy in your cloud of choice, if you're an AWS shop or an Azure shop, if you prefer Google Cloud, Tableau supports all of those. And Tableau can also offer uh, a hosted managed service. If you don't want to take care of managing the environment, uh, Tableau definitely does that for you. And then all you have to, uh, to do is just uh, bring in your data and, and leverage that. You can definitely deploy it on Linux and Windows. And again, these are all factors which are quite important because you don't have to necessarily force a different environment into your existing technology stack. You can just bring Tableau right into it and get started. So again, this was a very brief introduction to Tableau. Uh, there's lots more to learn and know about the, uh, the platform. If you're just getting started with it, um, I, there's a wealth of resources out there online. I do recommend you to uh, either reach out to us or to Tableau directly and, and they, uh, uh, or just uh, download a trial. Uh, but they, uh, um, in today's webinar, we'll try to dedicate most of our time on, on embedded. So what is embedded analytics? Uh, what, how do we define it? And if you look at the uh, Gartner definition for embedded analytics, um, Gartner really uh, uh, look at, it, at the uh, use of reporting and analytics capabilities in transactional business application. So for an example, think of your CRM system. If you're a uh, Salesforce user, for example, um, all your transactions, all your communications with different customers, your opportunities, ideally your orders are kind of logged in those uh, operational or transactional systems. And then next to it, you typically have an additional tab or layer where you can see some insights or reporting about those different transactions. So this is really what embedded analytics is all about. Um, the definition is quite long, but if you read down to the end of the definition, Gartner does mention that the integration of BI platforms into the application architecture as an enabler to really choose where in the business process the analytics should present itself to the different users. So Gartner is kind of opening here the discussion between integrating a BI platform versus kind of building your own BI engine. And we'll talk about the consideration of building versus buying in a moment. But what I want to do before we talk about that is, is dive a little bit deeper into the uh, uh, real life uh, applications or use cases we see for embedded solutions. So I'm going to take you from kind of the light to, to heavier deployment and the common use cases we see out there the first one is the uh, simple web pages integration. I'll open up a, a quick example here. What you can see here, this is a, uh, the Sydney Morning Herald a website. This is an article showing the, uh, the science behind the, uh, the date selection patterns that the Australian people have for their wedding dates. So just a standard web page, everybody can access that web page. And as you scroll through it, you can see different assets such as videos, but you can also see visuals which are basically tab Tableau visualization embedded right into this web page. Um, so all those visuals and nice, uh, uh, nice uh, charts are basically creating Tableau. Um, you can actually see it right here. If I scroll down into this visual, you can see this is a, uh, uh, a Tableau visualization. This toolbar at the bottom could be exposed or could be, uh, could be completely hidden to the users when you embed. In this case, uh, the Morning Herald decided to uh, to display it, maybe they want to maybe provide the users to option to uh, share this or, uh, or download this visual uh, into other elements. Uh, and, and it's adding a lot of value to this web page. You can see, for example, to this article, you can see uh, uh, very quickly there's very 
uh, uh, noticeable picks in terms of uh, the date that the uh, Australian choose to, uh, to get married in. I'm, I'm guessing this is not unique to Australian people, but the pattern here is very clear. Uh, most people would pick a date that really repeats or has a sequential uh, number, number pattern in it. So you can see that the people would prefer to get married on a 12-12-12 or a 10-10-10 type of date, uh, which is quite interesting and uh, kind of a going for the memorable, memorable date. It's obviously very logical when you think about why people choose those type of dates, but maybe not something we'll think about without seeing this, this visual that they illustrate that they so well. So that's exactly the, the power of Tableau, that providing insights very quickly for, for powerful visual, visualizations. And in this case, it's embedded in the most simplistic way into a, an open website. So everybody can access that web page, uh, and that eliminates a lot of complexities that comes with and better analytic solutions. You don't need to worry so much about authentication. You don't need to worry so much about security, which is often a, an important factor in the best solution. In this case, the integration is simply embedding a window into Tableau uh, on your website, but it's showing the exact same content uh, with the exact same data set to all users. Um, so a, a lot of complexity that comes with embedded solution goes away with this form of a, uh, embedded solutions. The next level of the, uh, a common use case we often see is, is custom web portals. And this one is, is, a, uh, is something that can be done either internally or externally. So you can have an internal web portal uh, running on your organizational intranet, serving your internal employees, or you can have that customer facing, uh, serving your customers or your partners, uh, usually behind a, a login with uh, the different credentials you provide to your customers. So in those type of environments, there's definitely a need to uh, do a deeper integration around the security. Um, the content may be the same across the different types of users, but the, the type, of the actual data set that you, you load on the different visuals will be different based on the logged in users. So definitely uh, a deeper integration there. I'll load up an example here that they, uh, uh, we built uh, not long ago for the Association of the American Medical Colleges. And this is a, uh, basically the website of the uh, Association of American Medical Colleges. We altered that website just a bit, and we added here under the uh, data reporting tools for members, we added here a second uh, tab uh, of reporting under the uh, residency application uh, applicant information. And if I click on that, what you can see here is the website of the association with the entire uh, menu and navigation system there at the top, uh, and then on the left-hand side as well. And then right here on the bottom right, I've embedded a Tableau dashboard uh, that is basically acting exactly the same way um, as it would if I were to access this dashboard in Tableau server uh, directly or from Tableau desktop. So for example, um, I can see here the count of residency by geographies. If I hover over a, uh, New York, for example, I can see there's 18 different programs. That's a nice functionality that Tableau offers and visiting tooltips. But basically, that's an interactivity that Tableau offers and adds a lot of value to my application, and I can access that exactly the same way within my hosting a website or my custom portal in this case. Um, so I can do the same across the different locations. Um, I can uh, uh, further interact with this data, and I can do it in Tableau by building different filters in Tableau, or integrate my portal directly with uh, uh, Tableau's data. So at the top here, what you see is a, a different set of filters allowing me to filter by different applicant pools. So for example, if I wanted to focus on the oncology, I can just click on that filter. And this is basically a straight, uh, simple HTML button that I'm able to use from my application to a, apply a filter value in Tableau's environment. This is possible thanks to the Tableau JavaScript API that was released uh, not too long ago, and basically allowing uh, that type of exchange between my portal and Tableau's application. Um, a lot of flexibility is really provided by the fact that this API is, a, is now allowing me to do this type of interaction. So in this case, I clicked on Oncology, I can see kind of a, uh, uh, a reduced number of programs across the different states uh, in the US. And if I click maybe on the Cardiology, I can see here a different, uh, a different display of the different programs. In this case, I can see that most of the Cardiology programs are centered around uh, the Middle East and there's only uh, uh, one program in the, in the West, for example. And I can further interact with it. I can choose, for example, a, a, a specific programs just by selecting those with the lasso tool of Tableau and really leverage the interactivity of the visual interface of Tableau. And in this case, 
I'm drilling down further into the data. You can now see a map showing me the selection of the states where I uh, focused on. And then I can see a second map next to it with a breakdown of the different uh, locations where I have these programs running. And then the bottom here, a table displaying uh, more granular data about those different programs and information around that. So leveraging the power of Tableau in providing a very rich interactive interface to access and analyze the data uh, all through uh, my custom portal. Another important factor to mention here is with this JavaScript API, I'm now able to also build kind of my own dedicated uh, user navigation system or my uh, user experience flow that I want to have to enable my customer portal users um, to access the environment or the data. I don't have to depend on Tableau's predefined navigation system. In this case, I've built kind of my own menu with the different reports I want users to be able to access. So for example, here I can switch down to the uh, residency comparison dashboards. And again, I can provide and design visualizations that will be very interactive, providing the users maybe with the option to access the data in a tablet view, or maybe switch to a more visual interface and, and see this data over charts. I can now maybe uh, um, control the, the actual measurements I'm displaying this visual. So maybe I want to change uh, the color to represent not the, uh, uh, the average MSAT, but the average uh, GPA, for example. And that's quite interesting. I can see now that the, uh, the average salary doesn't correspond to the average GPA. So I can see that some of the programs are making a pretty high salary compared to the rest of the programs, but I don't need a high GPA to get in that day program. So uh, an interesting analysis I can do and provide it to the users in a very simple uh, interface that doesn't require any training. Um, anyone that can use the website and the internet can go in here and navigate the way around without knowing much about Tableau or anything about Tableau for, for that matter, and just by pointing and clicking the way they would interact with any other web, web page they, uh, um, they get exposure to. Now, one point to mention here, um, I, I won't cover in great details here the uh, technical details around the way this uh, JavaScript API uh, um, interaction was implemented, uh, or the way I would go about embedding Tableau uh, technically into my platform. Um, that, they, that we can say for a different webinar, but I do want to point out a, uh, a great Tableau resource that, that's available out there online. That's the uh, Tableau Embed Analytics Playbook. It really covers everything you need to know about the, uh, the comments and areas of the better analytics, uh, from how you actually integrate your views that you develop in Tableau right into your applications, the JavaScript API I just mentioned, how you would take care of authenticating and, and, and creating that single sign-on experience you just saw, um, how you would synchronize uh, users across your applications and the users that are known to Tableau, handling multi-tenancy and real-level data security for uh, controlling data access, and so on and so on. So a great, uh, a great playbook to really help you quickly accelerate and get started with integrating Tableau into your environment. Contains all the technical details with great samples and documentations and videos in terms of how to uh, actually integrate uh, Tableau into your environment. Going back to uh, the common use cases and real life scenarios we see for embedded, uh, the, third, the third type of use case I want to uh, talk about is a third party application. So this is very similar to custom web portals. Um, the main difference here is that they, uh, you integrate into very popular um, portals that are available out there, such as SharePoint, or in this case on the screen, you can see Tableau embedded into Salesforce. So if you're a Salesforce organization, you can definitely have Tableau visualizations and dashboards provided in the Salesforce environment next to the uh, uh, transactional operations that users will be doing in Salesforce. And that will allow users to stay in the same application, stay in the context of the workflow they work on. They, they won't have to leave to go to a different analytical application and just help them uh, quickly access and push the information uh, right at their fingertips to access and analyze it further with the same accounts they've looked at or with the same context of uh, value they've selected so far to look at in, in Salesforce, for example. Very similar to custom web portals, uh, but just done into popular applications. Tableau has built-in hooks that support the integration into Salesforce, SharePoint, and other applications that are standard and popular out there. The fourth use case is a uh, scenario where you actually build a customer-facing product. Could be a multi-tenant multi product that you're hosting on the cloud. Could be a, an on-premises solution that you deploy your customer sites. But again, something that you resell and package up to it to your customer. Um, a great example for this one um, <clears throat> is a, from, coming from our fellow 
uh, Canadian uh, British Columbia based uh, uh, Inetco. What the Inetco does is <clears throat> provide real time transaction monitoring, analytics, and data forwarding solutions for omni channel banking, self service networks, and payment processing environment. So essentially, what Inetco did is they built a couple of products, uh, such as the Inetco Insights, Inetco Analytics. And in those products, they were actually able to embed Tableau and leverage all the uh, uh, data monitoring systems, all the data architectures and, and collection models they built behind the scenes to present the information to the users packaged using the Tableau Reach visual interface that allows all the analysis on top of that data. Um, if you're not a Tableau user, you won't necessarily recognize that they, uh, this is Tableau behind the scenes, uh, but this is exactly what they're using here and providing that great experience to the customers uh, sold through, a, uh, through their uh, different applications. So that's the, uh, uh, the fourth use case. Another use case I want to mention, which is not a classic embedded uh, analytics use case, but it's definitely a great starting point to get into embedded, is really what we call standalone white labeled or branded applications, if you will. Uh, it's basically taking Tableau Server or um, uh, Tableau Online, replacing Tableau's logo with your own custom uh, uh, logos, typically your organizational uh, logos, and presenting that to your customer as if it was something you built for them uh, and you haven't used any other application. Um, now, if this is customer facing, uh, this will provide you very similar um, solutions to what you would get in embed scenarios minus the integration piece into your own web applications. So that's a very quick way to get started and see if, if there is demand for your solution, if your solution is well designed and there is adoption to it, and then later take care of the integration piece. Um, now, because Tableau is a full, uh, full analytics platform that covers everything around governance and administration and all that, you can definitely create accounts in Tableau and provide those to your customers and still have the single sign-on ex uh, single sign -on experience or provide them uh, with a, uh, uh, at least the, the credentials they need to log into the environment. You can still have low-level security uh, and all the same features and functionalities you would need in an embedded scenario. Um, but just provide it directly in the Tableau applications without having to worry about building your own portal or integrating into an existing portal you already, you already built. So a quick way to get started with Tableau Analytics, just by providing via standalone Tableau server or a Tableau Online. Coming back to uh, the build versus buy uh, debate that I, I mentioned earlier around the uh, definition of embedded analytics, um, this is a debate that's very popular and common across any software development project. Should I build or should I buy a commercial application and, and leverage that? And uh, really, if you think of it, embedded analytics is a bit different than using uh, analytics for your internal users um, in kind of a non-customer facing fashion. Um, unfortunately, you cannot cut corners and you cannot uh, uh, deploy internally the same way as, as you deploy externally simply because your customers uh, hold you to a different standard. Um, you have to make it per perfect. You can't uh, uh, um, have defects. You can't have uh, bad designs. It really needs to be uh, a full product approach uh, and development approach to this type of solution versus uh, something that could be maybe a, a bit more iterative or wrap around the edges when you develop a, something for internal users consumption. So the debate is obviously across a, a number of, uh, of consideration. I want to outline here a few goals that I like to keep in mind when I think about building versus buying an analytical engine. And the first one is around the uh, short time to market. So obviously these days, most organizations are adopting more and more agile approaches to developing a solution. Uh, it's all about getting to that MVP as quickly as possible. And doing that with a, a, a tool such as Tableau is typically very quick. Um, you don't need a, a very specialized developer to go into Tableau and, and create a dashboard. That typically takes a few hours or a day. Uh, you can very quickly develop something in Tableau. And doing something to the same level of sophistication will take quite a bit of time for a, uh, even a full stack on web developer. Now, of course, if you're building something very basic, that, that is necessarily not a, not a problem. But if your solution needs to um, go to a bit, a, a bit more of a higher level of complexity, for example, doing some of the interactions I was demoing earlier in the custom portal, these are the things that they will take definitely longer for a web developer to build. And, and typically, they will lack a lot of functionalities that come built in the application, such as being able to subscribe to a, 
uh, uh, to get the report on a schedule a uh, uh, recurring basis or being able to set up data alerts or even just download data into a Excel or PDF. These are things that comes in built in with Tableau and will take you pretty much a, uh, a whole development cycle to build in your own custom application. The second point is around customization. Um, and oftentimes when you develop a solution, there is an exact vision you want to meet for your customers. Uh, building that in-house is definitely possible. And really it's only a question of how good your developers are and how much time you want to give them to develop those type of things. So this, it's almost limitless, uh, assuming you have a, uh, an endless uh, uh, bucket of, a, of time and, and a, uh, uh, resources available to, uh, to develop those things. Uh, when you buy a, a, a tool, Typically, um, uh, there is that concern about being limited to what the tool offers around customization. But I will say that tools such as Tableau really gives you the option to not only customize inside the application to a, a very high degree, but also to leverage those APIs such as the JavaScript API I was demoing earlier to really integrate the application into any experience you want to deliver to your customers. So while there, there are maybe a little bit more limitations compared to building by yourself, you can really reach almost the same degree of customizations even if you were to buy a solution. The third point is a point which I find very important. Uh, really it's around getting a, a competitive edge. Whether you're trying to resell your solution or just provide, to a just provide as a value add to your customer and better retain them, um, your, your ability to gain, to gain that pay, a better service or being able to even sell a solution uh, when you try to develop something yourself, um, it is much more limited compared to what a, uh, uh, a software house like a uh, Tableau can develop with a uh, Tableau's R&D team that is 100% focused on analytics, have been developed that for a number of years and have developed a very rich amount of their uh, capabilities to really go deeper into a, uh, the next level of analytical experiences for users. Um, so if you're comparing a, uh, to a competitive solution that they just exports to PDF and Excel, sure, building your own uh, solution in-house may be better than that, but if your competitors also choose to embed a, uh, a solution from a third-party vendor, typically they would outpace what they, your developers can do in-house quite quickly because uh, that uh, vendor cabins will typically, if, if it's an innovative vendor such as Tableau, will, uh, will, uh, will scale and uh, and keep on progressing much faster than what they, your in-house developers can do. Finally, um, it's around cost. And if you look at cost, most people uh, uh, are worried about the licensing cost of, the, of buying a solution. Definitely that will, uh, at least initially, make the, the buying options look more expensive. But if you uh, consider the amount of time that your developers will spend and the type of skills that you will need to hire for developing your own in-house solution and maintaining it, um, you'll see that over time, usually you'll see a lower cost. Obviously, it depends on how easy to use the tool that you buy is, but if that tool is easy enough to use, you'll see that you can service your solution with uh, analysts that are not as a, uh, specialized as your web developers or your full stack on developers uh, and be able to keep on developing and customizing your solution uh, with a much lower cost uh, investment compared to a building solution. So all in all, I, I think the picture here is clear. If, if you're building something which is more than a basic solution, typically at some point there'll be that tipping point where you would want to buy a solution uh, such as Tableau and embed that into your application. Another consideration around building versus buying is all the things that comes in packaged into Tableau that you won't necessarily see in the interface but are very important to your overall solution. Um, so think of all the security and compliance requirements that you would have. Uh, being able to authorize what content users can access, or being able to control the data sets that the different users will see. These are things that Tableau offers natively out of the box, and in your application will, will take quite a bit of time to, to develop. Same thing goes with compliance, or being able to authenticate with a uh, third-party identity providers. Uh, Tableau simplifies all of that by providing that already uh, out of the box without having to develop that from scratch. And finally, a very important point uh, that people often miss around uh, embedded solutions, and that's around the governance, and specifically around tracking the usage of the solution. Um, if you sell your solution to your customers, or even if you're just providing that as a value-add service, a key success factor for you would be to track how many users are actually using that solution that you invested in. Um, you want to see which users are using what dashboard, how often they consume those, 
uh, which dashboards you need to tune in. Tableau, those things are built in out of the box of the user analysis views that you get as an administrator. And if you look at the uh, uh, building your own solution, this will, will be an extra layer of complexity that you'll need to add that will not necessarily benefit your customers, but will be very critical to, for you to understand how well your solution is being adopted. So again, just another example for some of the built-in KVs that Tableau offers that lend itself very well to a, a full solution that you need to build uh, to your external customers. Okay, so we talked quite a bit about the different uh, uh, examples of embedding uh, analytics into different applications. I want to now shift gears and, and talk a little bit about how embedded reflects in, in the concept of monetizing your data. And the way I like to organize that is across different levels. If you think of your organization analytics, analytical uh, maturity, um, and you kind of think of a trend ranging from traditional BI all the way up to a uh, transforming the way you do things with data, um, there's different levels of data monetization we identify. The first one, if you, uh, if you are at the level of traditional BI and starting to scale that out to a, a greater number of users within your organization, uh, you're able to monetize your data by optimizing processes. Uh, so basically, think of the case where you have your internal customer users portal, it doesn't have to be even external, but internal users portal, such as Salesforce or such as SharePoint, where you integrate Tableau into, this will speed up the time for decision making, provide better decisions for uh, uh, your users and, and your, basically your employees, allowing them to, uh, to reduce cost and, and time and obviously optimize the, their efficiencies and, and, and save more money for the organization. So that's kind of the very basic first level of the monetizing your data. Uh, and if you think of the context as embedded, it will be really in providing that where your uh, users of the organizations, where the employees are doing their work. So in that moment, if you can provide analytics, you'll be able to gain those efficiencies and optimize processes and ultimately save money. The second level is around customer retention. Uh, as more and more organizations are moving into uh, a subscription-based model and you think about the uh, kind of how you will retain and make sure your customer stays with your, your services, uh, it's really about speed and how quickly you can respond to your customer's uh, request. And there's two ways I can see embedded they reflected here. One is around uh, the engagement level. If you're able to integrate the uh, analytics such as the uh, uh, Tableau dashboards into your customer-facing portal, as I demonstrated earlier, you'll be able to better engage your customer, uh, provide a, or prove the value that you offer to them, uh, and gain that speed that they would expect from you in terms of answering their different questions. Now, Tableau will also provide great self-service capabilities to your internal employees to provide better answers to custom questions that will come from your, uh, your employees. So again, uh, you'll be overall better suited in terms of providing uh, a better value to your customers, retain greater customer stickiness, uh, and ultimately uh, uh, gain money by uh, reducing your churn rate. The third level is the one that most people think about when you, uh, you think of a data monetization in the context of embedded application, and that is around real building new data products uh, or analytical capabilities for your customers and reselling that and packaging that to your, to your customers. We'll focus on the different opportunities we see with Tableau's capabilities uh, at the end of this uh, webinar, as mentioned, uh, but that's kind of the uh, ultimate level you typically want to reach when you think of a, uh, an embedded solution that's a uh, customer facing. So on that note, I want to turn over the, the mic to Jeff, and Jeff will be able to walk us through a, uh, a, a very interesting use case of how we've uh, helped a, an international nonprofit organization to leverage Tableau to deliver that uh, competitive edge. Um, so Jeff, um, the mic is yours. All right, Ariel, thank you very much for that. So I will be presenting on the actual kind of live use case here of uh, implementing a white label or branded uh, version. All right, so a little bit background here on the, uh, the, the subject of our case study is a uh, international nonprofit that is headquarters in the Washington DC area. So that's where I come in. Uh, in this organization, it is comprised of a parent uh, franchise. Um, you know, it's a simplified way to explain their organizational structure that uh, in, include 150 independent members. And I think it's important that we really emphasize the independent uh, aspect here as these are unique organizations that have their own tax ID, their own culture. They are based in varying locations.
applications. Uh, the focus of our implementation was uh, North America, uh, so inclusive of United States of America and uh, portions of Canada. Uh, so you can imagine that in each one of these locations, we have a varying uh, degree of population density that these franchise members are serving as part of their nonprofit mission. They also have varying degrees of skill level, whether they are a small organization in the backwoods of Tennessee, or if they are you know, in a large metropolitan area such as San Francisco that has uh, access to um, quite a bit of technology and people who have the, uh, the capability to implement that technology. Um, within those member um, franchises, we have 800 locations that they all manage independently. Um, so these include donation centers, these include places where they actually provide their services and their mission, um, you know, whether it relates to counseling or training or things like that. Uh, and then they have uh, locations where they do retail in order to assist in uh, fundraising for their missions. What is the challenge that we're facing here? The challenge is that there is no unified data infrastructure. Um, you know, I said franchise is a simplified way to view this, and it very much is. There is no single franchise mandated uh, software or data warehousing um, implement, implemented here. So each each franchise location has their own uh, data uh, way of meth, uh, way of leveraging data methodologies. They have their own reporting methodologies. Uh, so that was the kind of the number one challenge here is how do we get all of the data into one place so we can begin reporting it out? Where was the, the value in this? Uh, was the, the brick and mortar stores that they have uh, are competing with the likes of Amazon and eBay um, and various other ease of use to get things that you would otherwise go to their re uh, retail stores to get. Um, and then kind of the, the symptom of all of this is the network of 800 retail locations are not sharing their insights. So you might have some great things that are moving your, your mission forward and your uh, donation revenues forward in one location that is not being shared because there's no insight into reporting or conversation being facilitated around that data. How did we get, begin to address this challenge is uh, we leveraged Tableau to service quote unquote, external customers. So these are the franchise uh, members. They are not, um, again, internal clients to our uh, our main client as the franchise owner. Uh, so they're seen as the customers in this, uh, this circumstance. Uh, we built a custom intake file process using Python in order to uh, allow for an easy and uh, very self-explanatory way for them to upload their data so we could then begin to uh, dish it back out into uh, Tableau. And then we implemented a whole data uh, stack with, around data warehousing and ETL processes to clean the data, apply data quality uh, checks using uh, the Quilliop software into uh, providing reassured Tableau dashboards that were exposed to these uh, quote unquote external customers. So it didn't just start with a pretty dashboard um, embedded in any sort of web page. There's quite a bit of planning that goes into this to make sure that you have a successful launch. Um, and the first thing, as Ariel has already mentioned, is discussing security. How do you want this to, to happen? You know, what are your requirements around who can view the data, uh, how sensitive the data is, uh, and you know, essentially how do your customers get to the data? Uh, we decided to integrate this with a secure web portal that was already in place, as most people uh, do, uh, and put into place some user-specific permissions to ensure that sensitive data uh, was not allowed to leak across the, uh, the, the franchise locations. Change management is a understated but very important part of any implementation of Tableau Embed when you're facing out to a new customer base. Uh, we chose to go with a phased approach to onboarding this new platform. This is a new technology that a majority of these franchise locations had never really engaged with before. Uh, so we needed to make sure that we took the small steps, uh, you know, the crawl before we walk uh, approach to, uh, to phasing this new technology out. We also really realized throughout the process that local champions were a, the key to success uh, with 
over 150 different organizations, there's no one communication methodology that's gonna work across them all. So being able to identify people that were passionate about moving the mission forward and engaging in this new data structure and being able to say there's value in it for them personally, uh, those people really made uh, the implementation and are continue to make the implementation uh, to be successful. At a higher level, um, constructing a customer advisory team is also was very beneficial for us. It uh, really gave us the, the franchise members that were engaged and wanted to see this be successful, as well as some of the franchise members that just wanted a seat at the table to make sure that they could uh, have some insight and say into the process. Uh, that gave us a high level approach of how we could then uh, communicate to our local champions and make sure that, that we had that high level to the, uh, the micro level uh, within that um, strategic contact. Monetization and internal value. Uh, as Ariel said, um, not all value here is about uh, money. It, uh, it does have some to do with the internal value. Uh, this organization is not selling their data. They're not charging their franchise locations to be able to access this data. But what they are seeing is that there is value to producing this data out because the better their franchise locations do, uh, the better that their mission as well as the entire network does uh, in and of itself. Uh, and that's really the value they saw in this data and why they chose to make it available uh, and invest quite a bit of time and resources into making it available to their franchise members. Marketing, uh, another thing that is often uh, kind of overlooked in things like this, um, you know, you can have a beautiful dashboard, but if people don't know it's there, uh, it becomes a little bit of a problem. So driving interest and awareness in the product was a, a big, big piece of this, releasing some teaser videos, uh, releasing several emails and the participants experience in the dashboards and the things that uh, you know, they've pulled out of it. Um, they have several internal conversations and, um, and meetings that they invite their franchise members to and actually having those uh, local champions, a select few of them come and actually advocate at those meetings. Uh, and then of course, just a, a standard communication plan to make sure it doesn't fall off of the, uh, the attention span of everyone who's busy making sure their organization is doing the, uh, the fundraising and doing the mission. Uh, something like this can often fall by the wayside. So making sure it's top of mind. Training plan, enabling uh, a wide range of skill levels to be able to engage in this product is paramount to making sure that you have a successful implementation. Um, I often joke with people, you know, we, we had some of these folks that uh, literally were continuing to have uh, paper receipts and ledger books. Um, and then we had the people that already had standing Tableau implementations and an IT firm uh, within their organization of about 20 to, to 30 people. So being able to capture all levels in your training really not only empowers the users, but it makes them excited that it's something that they can use. Uh, Tableau is a wonderful product for this because it really is intuitive uh, and it makes it easy for people who are beginners and they just wanna come and see their metrics uh, versus the people that are already pros at it and they wanna be able to come engage with the data and even take something back into their system and work on it. And not only that, when you're dealing with the skill levels, you're also dealing with the different levels within the organization. So making sure you're accounting for each persona from the retail manager to the CEO, uh, and never forget the CFO. Uh, very important personas to be able to build training plans around to make sure that they are on board. So when we actually get to the execution of our plan, uh, pilot testing uh, was and continues to be an important part of our rollout. Uh, we have been working on this project for about two and a half years, and we have, as I said, been doing a phased implementation. So we've got several departments uh, or data domains that are already onboarded to this and successfully using the dashboards. And the success really comes from engaging the franchise members during our pilot testing. Uh, not only uh, are they engaged in the development and the whiteboarding, um, but they are being able to get in, test it, give us their feedback so we can really make sure that we're uh, giving a product that is the franchise member's creation and not just something that the parent organization is mandating be used. Uh, this is a collaborative effort. And once you've established that in your implementation, um, and even if you're doing a true external customer implementation, it's a really strong message to be able to say to the customer that we care about your opinion and we've built this for you to be able to leverage insights. Um, and 
again, making sure you action the feedback. When you get the feedback, let them know we've heard this feedback and this is the thing that we have done to resolve that. Um, it really does provide a great uh, boost to your implementation plan. Once we've actually launched the, uh, the product, uh, the dashboards out for their use, uh, you know, it's the post-launch training, uh, making sure that you're continuing to assess the training needs, looking at your embedded uh, trackers in Tableau Server to see where people are going, what areas aren't being utilized, uh, and making sure that you are continuously challenging your design and your metrics to make sure that your dashboards are being fully utilized. And, you know, is it something that's just not useful? Or is it something that they don't know how to engage with? Uh, we've uncovered a few situations where people just didn't know how to engage with drop-down uh, dimension selectors. And we were able to turn around a one to two minute refresher video and put that out and be able to, uh, to kind of bridge that gap. Relevant case studies are uh, critical to providing business users whose focus is their day-to-day, -day, um, what the value is for these dashboards. Uh, so we went out, we collected a bunch of real world examples from the, uh, the franchise uh, participating members and then built some of our training around those uh, so we could really provide that uh, context. Um, and then finally, everything has to be upkept. Um, we have uh, developed a monthly uh, release cycle where we're managing new content. So a lot of these, uh, the feedback uh, gets looped into these monthly uh, content cycles. Um, naturally, break fixes, uh, rare uh, as they are, do get put in uh, immediately. And then finally, we make sure that we test our new content in a UAT environment with those um, customer advisory team members to ensure that once we go to production, it is going to broadcast across all of the, uh, the organization as effectively as we, we hope it will. will. Nope, I believe I have uh, skipped a slide. There we go. So the adoption outcome, um, you know, as I said, we're kind of mid phase here, but we've been in it for two years. We're seeing a strong, successful adoption across the franchises. There's a strong sense of value, especially when we go see these folks in person. Uh, we're getting a lot of great feedback of how it's helping them now that they've been able to incorporate in their, their daily, um, their rituals. Um, the Tableau visualizations are driving franchise participation. So like I said, there's a lot of data that they are providing, much of which is optional. So when they come into their dashboards and they see that insights are missing for their organization and on a comparison dashboard where we have allowed aggregate comparisons across the network, they're seeing insights uh, for a, a region and then they'll go in and they'll actually start producing their data that they weren't necessarily delivering to us earlier. So the more insights that we're giving, the more data we're getting, it's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation, but ultimately once you get that cycle going, um, it really picks up momentum uh, and we're seeing those uh, those gaps begin to fill in naturally as people are seeing the insights or you know want to see insights uh, on their dashboards. What do we have coming next for us? Uh, to continue to roll out this phased approach, we have a few more departments through 2019 we're going to continue to uh, to be able to put out, uh, and really to continue to facilitate and empower power users uh, at all franchise levels uh, to be able to engage with these on Tableau Server and ultimately uh, garner more of the insights that they're going to know as a subject matter experts that maybe we uh, won't be able to capture in all of our interviews. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting um, stuff to come, but ultimately we're seeing a, a great and wonderful impact by using Tableau Embed uh, in a white label uh, branded approach here. And Ariel, I'll kick it back to you. Excellent, thank you, Jeff. No, I really like that, they, that point of how Tableau is leveraged to really um, drive the adoption of the solution by showcasing the different members of data they're missing. That's a, it's a great story. Um, okay, what we'll do in the last few minutes that we have here, really try to focus on um, the opportunities you have out there to really take your data um, and, and turn it into a uh, um, money, how you can really monetize on the different KBs that Tableau has offered. Um, Jeff mentioned the monthly release a cycle, which is quite aggressive. Tableau is also a very aggressive release cycle in the past two years, uh, two years moving into a, a quarterly release cycle. Uh, every quarter is a new version uh, with lots of new features and capabilities that uh, are just uh, uh, new opportunities for you. Uh, so I want to give you some inspiration in terms of the way you can think about those capabilities and really uh, package those in a way that they uh, could be uh, resold to your customers. So if you are at that third level of uh, data monetization that I talked about earlier, 
the way I like to think about and, and talk to it, uh, talk about my uh, my customers is you really want to think about the different plans you want to offer to your customer. Think about a subscription model uh, where you have that basic plan, which is ideal for uh, getting started and for your consumers. It's typically free. Uh, it could, for example, offer uh, interaction with visualizations, accessing dashboards on mobile devices, and maybe the option to download visualizations images. And then next to it, you offer a, a pro plan. And in that plan, uh, the power users that they opt to that plan uh, will be charged some kind of a monthly fee. And then into it, they'll get all the basic features, plus, for example, the ability to download raw data and further manipulate in their own uh, Pablo desktop environment, or maybe uh, uh, create their own data alerts. Uh, so kind of think about the way you package and offer that. And I want to give you some ideas around some of those capabilities that can really be leveraged for those type of use cases. So, the first one is, as this table above showcases, you can really be selective about the features you expose using that uh, JavaScript API. So earlier I was showing you in the portal, um, if I go back to that portal that I was, I was demonstrating earlier, how I can interact the different uh, uh, filter values in the Tableau dashboards from my external application, how I can build my own navigation system. But I can also control functionality that is native to Tableau from uh, my outside application. So for example, Tableau offers a native uh, ability to download data or images uh, or PDFs uh, from the different dashboards, those same functionalities can be called from your application using your own uh, uh, buttons and toolbars that you want to build. And of course, with that comes the option to decide which user will be able to access those directly from, a, from your application. So again, the ability to package and, and plan to different types of uh, offerings that you have. The second one is not just integrating Tableau into another application, but actually leveraging Tableau's addition of custom extension to offer unique integration that would work with your customers' uh, applications. So for example, if you're new to custom extensions, what that is, is basically the ability to uh, build your own custom solution that will provide a new level of uh, integration uh, with any other system. You can think of the environments where you would maybe take data from Tableau dashboard and write it back into your customer operational systems. Or you can think of a, uh, an offering to your customers where they'll be able to create their own custom unique exports into their own formats, or uh, maybe the way the export works is going to be very, very unique to uh, the way the operational team uh, likes to get the data. So those are extensions that you can either leverage from the existing extension gallery developed by uh, Tableau and Tableau's partners, or um, you can uh, just uh, build your own. Um, I'll give a shout here to our own uh, Tuan Hung that they, uh, is leading our UK Tableau office and uh, our Tableau practice, and he has built a, a nice extension for data tables. Uh, so if you ever wondered if Tableau can do uh, multi-page uh, tables across a, uh, um, a, uh, a kind of the uh, different number of records you're going to show in each page and the ability to export that into a uh, PDF and print that. Uh, you can definitely leverage that uh, extension, for example, and, and develop that type of capability and resell that to your customers. All those uh, extensions and integrations are done with Tableau's extensive uh, API. Um, there's a JavaScript API that they, I've talked about quite a bit in terms of how you can integrate it with your web application. There's a REST API that allows you to synchronize and automate everything that's around your server administration, the user accounts, authentication. Um, and, and even the, uh, the document API allowing you to automate your workflows when you uh, try to automate your environment across multiple tenants, or maybe you wanna, when you want to move content from a development staging and uh, into a production environment. So those type of life cycles development that you would typically see in a product that is embedded uh, can, can be fully automated with Tableau's uh, API, um, and they're all leveraging common uh, languages, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Python, so really don't need to learn something that's really unique uh, or new. You can just leverage uh, the most popular languages out there to do those type of integrations into your environments. Two more uh, capabilities I, I like to talk about very quickly that they, uh, you can really leverage to a further monetize a uh, Tableau. The first one is around embedding um, self-service capabilities into your portal. Um, so that's a concept that most people will not necessarily think about initially when they go about embedding into their uh, application. For the most part, most organizations will predefine content, embed that, and provide just that to the customers. Now, of course, it can be quite interactive, as I demonstrated earlier, but you can actually take it to the next level with the web offering experience of Tableau, which is 
uh, really developed quite a bit in the, the latest releases. You can now do almost anything in the web interface in terms of exploring data. So think of an environment where you give your customers curated data models that they can go in, explore, just drag and drop, create new dashboards in the Tableau, very simple interface, uh, and, and then eliminate the need to go back to you with new requests. Now, there is a trade-off there. Some organizations do like to uh, um, uh, uh, monetize on the uh, services they offer around building custom solutions, um, but you can definitely offer that to your customers directly uh, and, and leverage that as, a, uh, as another way to package a additional capabilities. The last one I'll mention uh, is a brand new Ask Data capability released in the 2019.1 version of Tableau past, in the past month. Um, this is a great experience that you can offer to your customers to really simplify their way of asking uh, questions and getting answers of your data right from your application. Um, so I'll, I'll bring up a, uh, a quick example here, but basically, um, a, and you can play with it, a, uh, this is a, a public demo of Tableau um, that, they, uh, that you can access. There's different curated data models and data sets available here um, that they, uh, you can go about exploring. And what you can do in this interface is simply start asking questions using natural language uh, about your data. Um, so for example, Tableau will give you a couple of suggestions here, but you can just um, type in your own um, uh, question. So for example, uh, what is the, uh, uh, the average uh, number of uh, uh, beds um, across uh, across the different uh, neighborhoods, and so as you as you as you start typing that, you can see that the uh, um, Tableau is offering different options uh, to answer your question. And you can just choose those options, and Tableau will go in and automatically populate this with the right visualization that they uh, uh, suit your your question. And then you can keep on asking questions here to further break it down. Um, so, for example, here you can say, well, I want to see this, uh, but I want to see this by a uh, property type. And again, uh, as, I, uh, as I type it in, um, different options will show up. In this case, uh, I just want to break it down by property type. And now, Tableau will go back, uh, fetch information, and will choose to display it to me using a bar chart. So if you haven't seen the uh, new ASIC videos, definitely take a look. There's great videos and materials on that online. But again, the point here is that you can now embed a very simple experience for your consumers to access your data directly from your environment uh, without knowing anything about creating content and using Tableau just by typing in the question using natural language. Okay, so we are at the uh, top of the hour here. Um, I, I do want to take a little bit of time to, uh, uh, to ask some questions. I do realize some of you need to, to drop off and, and get to your next meeting. Um, this uh, webinar is recorded. We will share the recording with you afterwards. So, uh, um, uh, definitely feel free to uh, revisit or listen to the uh, question and answer period at your leisure. But if you do have a few more minutes, uh, we're happy to take some questions now. Okay, so a quick question here for, uh, for Jeff. This one is about the, uh, the customer story we presented earlier. Um, and the question here is around the implementation spanning across 150 organizations. Um, what type of behavior did you see when, uh, when you tried to deploy the solution? How did you handle the different organization behavior as, as those questions came in? Yeah, great question. Um, and, and one of my favorite to answer. So uh, ultimately, as I mentioned, you know, the local leads and the, uh, the customer team really did facilitate this process. But uh, with any change, there's going to be resistance. And we, we kind of had three different types of, of people, the people that were gung ho, they were, you know, running into it, they had local lead set up, they wanted to be part of the advisory team. Uh, we had the fence sitters who were kind of neutral and said, I'll wait and see what happens. I'm not really going to commit. And then um, there were detractors who really kind of uh, liked what they had, they didn't want to see change. Um, everything was fine for them, no reason to learn new things. So really what we did is we, we mixed the bag up as much as we could. When we had an opportunity to uh, get all three types of these, these people into the, the same room, we really leveraged the passion and the interest from the go-getters to influence the fence sitters uh, to ultimately uh, kind of work with the detractors. A few times we actually met one-on-one -on -one with the detractors, understood really what their processes were in their local uh, franchise. So we could see you know, why they might be a little bit more resistant to the change. 
once we converted one of those by actually working with them and making customized uh, solutions or just really working with them um, to understand better what the value was for them, uh, we use them as, as champions across the organizations uh, because folks would potentially know them as being a detractor and we had a convert that could uh, really push that uh, adoption for other people that were resistant, but as well as those fence sitters. Uh, so that is, I think, the primary uh, goal or the way that we achieve the goal uh, with uh, you know, such a diverse uh, set of organizations in this implementation. Yeah, fantastic. That is definitely a, a, a very uh, uh, a wide array of consideration on change management that need to take into place when they do that type of deployment. Um, okay, there's another question here about the embedding Tableau into mobile applications. So a lot of organizations that offer and package a solution also offer a proprietary app. How would you go about embedding Tableau into that? Um, so again, Tableau has built um, a, a mobile app bootstrap uh, providing both Objective-C and Cordova. Uh, so it really provides the ability to integrate into any medium that you have. It doesn't have to be a web portal. It can also be a proprietary web app, uh, mobile app. Um, and then really uh, uh, align to your organization solutions uh, across the different channels. So that option is definitely available and, uh, and quite nice to, to do. Okay, let's see if there's any additional uh, questions here. And again, if you, uh, if you do have questions, feel free to use the questions panel and type those questions in. And if there's no more questions, I know we're running a, a few minutes over time here. So uh, we'll uh, thank you for joining this webinar. Um, if you do have any questions to ask about the embedded analytics uh, with Tableau, feel free to reach out to us. Our emails are listed here on the screen. Um, and we'll be happy to support and answer any of those questions. Thank you for joining and have a good day. Goodbye.